It's certainly not going to chase this bird. This bird, of course, the Wahlberg's eagle, thinking about making his long trek north to the northern reaches of the sub-Saharan Africa. I'm sorry, southern reaches of the Sahara. So between the equator and the Sahara Desert is where he's going to go. Or she. And I think that this one is a juvenile. You can see a little bit uh, sort of scruffy. And therefore going to have to figure its way all the way north on its own with no help from anybody. And this is one of the great mysteries, of course, of, well, sort of avian biology and biology in general, is how it is that that animal has got the map to where it must go, coded into its DNA somehow, and how then it manages to navigate. That we're getting a handle on. We're slowly starting to understand how they manage to navigate. Isn't that nice? And you can see his little hood. Now, I was reminded of the story as Alice said to me, what bird is that? So that she could tell Tristan what bird it was so that he could make a pithy link across here. Um, I was reminded of a story that I may have told before, but there was a friend of mine who sent his guests on a walk with a tracker in the middle of the day. And I must just say that I think the 11 o'clock walk is probably a rival's prison in terms of a bush experience, so I wouldn't advise doing too much of it when you come out here. Anyway, I'll explain that a little bit later, but the tracker took them on a, on a walk, and then in the afternoon, the ranger said, how was your walk? What did you see? And they said, we saw a seagull. And the ranger looked at them, and he said, a seagull? They said, yes, a seagull. The tracker was adamant we'd seen a seagull. Anyway, it turned out that and this is, happens a lot out here. The tracker was uh, a brilliant naturalist, but not much of an English linguist, and that's quite common out in these parts, uh, because he was totally uneducated and illiterate. So he was brilliant at finding animals and knowing the medicinal uses of plants, and you know he could have lived in the bush quite happily with no uh, recourse to any form of uh, Western civilization, quite happily. But his English wasn't great, and he saw the bird and he said, well, that is a Walberg seagull. So the guest said, a what? A Walberg seagull. And so it became a seagull that they saw on their walk. And that is my story of the Walberg seagull. Now we are sitting here on Arethusa. We are making our way towards Red Dam, where I was rather hoping Shadow and her cub might be sitting languishing by the waterside.